Okay, so removing the short tension cord. First, we will have to remove the, the injection head from the rest of the system. To start, take a Torx 20 driver, and you're gonna have to remove the three screws, which is, is done by lining up these holes, and so that it'll expose the screws behind it. You'll then, after taking, having a firm grip on the injection head, By gripping the gray connector, gently pull, disconnect the wiring. Now there are two methods of doing this. The first method involves marking and then removing this uh, physical stop, which will allow you to slide the Z all the way out of the housing. We don't recommend doing this method because it's more likely that you could damage the flat cable or your flush gas tube. We will begin by taking a Torx 10, removing the screw that will clap that, that holds the cap in place, and releasing the long tension cord. And then slide carefully down. You can remove the long tension cord using the same Torx 10. Remove the two screws by holding the flat cable clamp in place. These also have very small washers on them, so you want to be careful not to misplace those. Now remove the Z clamp. And folding the flat cable gently over, feed it through the hole, being careful not to kink it. And now very carefully we'll slide the Z out of the housing. Now using a Torx 8 driver, we will remove the five screws that are holding this back cover on, in place. And these also have small lock washers that you want to be careful not to misplace. Remove the cover. And taking a firm grip, careful not to touch the circuit board. So the short cable attaches here, and this piece with this black plastic piece can be lifted off. Now you'll just pull that out. And as you can see, the bar that holds it in place is higher on one side. You'll want that side on top and the, there is also a side that is more sharply slanted and that side should be going down. That slant will allow it to move over the circuit board components. So first we'll insert the, the, the tension cord and try and make sure that the knot is facing in the up direction. That will slide and ensure that it's firmly seated inside the pole. Pull it down, make sure that it is snugly in place, and that the system moves properly. At this time, we'll also use uh, the RL uh, height tool, and we'll put that on here. This uh, this Z stop right here can sometimes become cracked with age or with use, and you just want to ensure that it is uh, firmly in place and that it fits, and that this fits precisely like that, which ensures that this height is correct. Uh, this just makes sure that you don't bend needles or have any other sort of problems. With the new cable in place, uh, we'll put the back cover back on and the open side goes towards the top. Again, using the 
Torx 8 and ensuring that the lock washers are still in place on the screws. While the system is disassembled, this is also a good time to replace the long tension cord if that needs replaced. And that's done by, by attaching it into place here at the bottom. And the easiest way to reinstall it is to take this side and tuck it slightly in, into this cavity here. And that will keep it out of the way when we reinsert it to the housing. And now very gently, you want to take a lot of care when you're doing this there's a magnet located on the inside of this housing and if you damage that uh, it, it can be a, a very costly repair so ensuring that all that both sides of the rollers are on the guide rails and that the flat cable is moving unobstructed we will take it all the way down to the bottom and now the same way that we remove the flat cable we'll gently bend it to make it so it fits through the hole and feed through the housing. We'll now reinsert the clamp. And the clamp always has a slight curve. We want that curve facing the back. So the curve will curve this way and face the back of the housing. We'll move it into position. And this part can be a little bit tricky, but once it's in position, we'll then line up the flat cable. And using the screws and the washers we removed earlier and a T10 driver. We'll reattach the flat cable clamp. Gently slide the carriage here. You want to be careful because it, right at this point it can slide out and that can cause damage. I recommend grabbing the flat or, or grabbing the tension cord and using that to lift it up to where you can get to the uh, to the tension cord. And again, this part can be a little tricky. Having two people might be best. We'll now hook the tension cord into the top cap. Using a Torx 10, reattach this screw. The injection head is now ready to be reconnected to the rest of the instrument. To do this, You'll want to connect the flat cable, snug firmly in place. And a very important step now is to first feed the Y axis as far out as it will go and then reattach and line up the injection head on the two guide pins. Once that is in place, we'll reattach using a Torx 20 driver and reinstall the three screws.